Yes, you have read the title of this video correctly. I've purchased another faulty Nintendo Switch after the luck that I had last week. Let's see if we can fix it. I also paid £60 for this one as well off of eBay. Can we get lucky twice in a row? Let's go. Here we have the Nintendo Switch in all of its glory and to be honest with you, this one seems a little too good to be true. The only damage that we seem to have that's quite noticeable is a little bit on the screen here where we've got a couple of scratches, but it's not actually on the screen itself, it's just around the bezel. If we turn it around to the back, Excuse my grubby finger marks, but this is also very very good condition as you can see There's not really too many scratches on it It's still got that switch gloss and would you believe it the kickstand is still present We also seem to have all of the screws in the places that they need to be so even at the top here You've got some screws and at the bottom We have the two next to the charging port those who buy off eBay and buy faulty items off of eBay will understand and know that it's very rare you see a faulty console in such good condition. The listing states that it doesn't charge, so first things first, like we did in our last video, we're going to take our USB amp meter. This will display how many amps the Switch is drawing and we should be able to see what the fault is with this Nintendo Switch. I'll try my best to explain the simplicity in layman's terms because that's how I understand things. So this is just simply a USB-C cable to USB-A which plugs into a docking station that I've got. Let's plug this into the actual switch and see what happens. Here we go. So we get 0.42 amps on the draw. So this shows that the battery is taking 0.42. I've got a comparison here of what it should do, okay? So on this one is 0.42. If we just take this out, if I take another Nintendo Switch, and I know that this one's good, this is one that I fixed in last week's video. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a video link in the description down below. But if we plug this in, this switch is off. If we plug this in, you'll see the behavior which should happen. So it goes 0.08, then it jumps up to 0.46. We get a battery display. It then restarts, so it'll go back down to 0.00 because the switch is rebooting. And then it goes up to 1.4, 1.45 for fast charging. That's what should happen. So clearly, Something is wrong with this switch because when we plug it in, it goes to 0 0.33, 0 0.46 was it, or 0 0.42, and it just stays there. I'm just going to check and see if the switch is in RCM mode. I don't know what RCM mode is, but I think it's something to do with, I don't want to say hacking the switch, because I don't think that's the right terminology, but when people try to put a different piece of software on the switch, I think. So let me hook this up to the PC and see if I get anything. I've just quickly checked and it doesn't say RCM mode on my computer. This is kind of side note, look at the quality of the rails on this switch. This is pretty much, in my opinion, like brand new. This is my other switch and if we have a look at the rails, you can see where it's just been grinded down and the paint's come off. With the information that we have regarding this switch, I'm now gonna take it apart and just have a look and see what's going on. I'll be using a triple zero Phillips screwdriver for these two screws and the one on the top and then I'll be using a Tri-Wing 2.0 for the four that are on the back and probably uh, a triple zero as well for the ones on the side just to take apart the switch. There's also one under the latch which is a Philips triple zero I believe. I almost forgot to check, do we have a game? No, unfortunately not. Now we just have some more Philips screws. Again, this is immaculate, I've just taken the back off and there's no dust whatsoever. Okay, do this part with me, we're just taking the back off now. What are we gonna find? Anything really obvious or are we gonna look good? Just having a little bit of a look but I mean, from what I can see, it looks absolutely spotless. This is the water damage indicator down here. When this turns pink, it means that we have a case of water damage, and usually that's by the charging port, but there's nothing there. Even the thermal paste is still pretty gooey. I'm gonna try something that should rule out a simple issue, which is I'm just gonna change the battery. I've not had a fix like this yet, so we'll see. Again, our USB amp meter in. What do we get? Do we get the same thing? 0.01. Well, it's not moving at all now. We're in 0.01. Let me just put the other battery back in, see if it's still the same thing. Maybe it's just that that battery's fully charged. 0.01. We have the exact same thing. We didn't, we didn't change anything. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I wonder then. Let me turn it over, because we flipped over the device, right? So does that mean that the charging port has gone? 0.01, does it bump up? Yes. Okay, so we're only getting charge on one side of the device, which would indicate to me that it's a bad charging port. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come where your boy Joey needs to do another charging port on a Nintendo Switch. I've not performed one of these successfully, and I really hope today we can nail it. Let's get the rest of the motherboard out of this case. And usually we do that by simply clicking our fingers. And there we have it.
Just gonna get the thermal paste off the board. We'll see if we can get a closer inspection of the charging port to see what's going on inside, but I find it quite difficult. I don't know if you guys can see there. I can see a couple of, yeah, some of the gold contacts look a bit spread out. So I'm shining a light in the port from my phone, <laughs> as well as two additional lights. There we go, I've just managed to get the microscope in a better position for you guys to see the state of the inside of the port. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff that shouldn't be touching where it is um, so we're just going to replace the charging port I could maybe attempt to put those back into place but it's going to I think it's going to be a bit more effort than, than replacing the port I've broken two Nintendo switches before by trying to replace the charging port so today is the day that I need to grab the switch by the horns and replace this charging port today's the day this is indeed one of the charging ports that I previously tried to put on a Nintendo switch and messed it up and luckily I was able to get this charging port back off but as you can see, the plastic, some of it is burnt. But I'm going to use this one. And then if I mess this one up, then what I'll do is I'll switch to a new one. But this one seems okay. I just need to not burn any more plastic. First things first, we're going to flood the holes with low melt solder on this side and the other side of the port. And hopefully that will ease it off a little bit better. Now I need to be careful because if I, if I use low melt solder, there are solder ports underneath, which is what makes this job, I think for me personally, the trickiest is because there's pads around about here on the Nintendo Switch. And say for example, I have low melt solder here, but I don't have low melt solder here. This solder is gonna melt first, and then I need to be careful and not pull at the charging port, because otherwise this is gonna rip pads. We don't want that. Let's go and wish me luck. We're gonna check the status of the pads on the board in a second, but what I wanted to show you first was the inside of this port. So as you can see, right here, if we look at the bottom side of it, it looks horrendous. So that's why it was only charging, I say charging, I use that term loosely, on one side. Look at how many of these pins are actually touching together as well. Um, and then if we look on the other side where it was charging okay, you see, I see okay, again, loosely use the term charging okay, but the other side was all right, let's just say that. So that's the old charging port. Let's have a look and see what the damage is on the board. Hopefully not too bad. Did I do it as a clean pull? Okay, that's good for me, is that there's no ripped pads whatsoever. I actually used quite a small nozzle as well, and I just moved the air around quite quick. Well, this for me is, is quite a small nozzle. I moved the air around quick, and how are we looking over here? We're looking good, that's all fine. And we've even cleared a hole here, which is good. What about the other side of the board? How are we looking? Um, I'm just checking the filters as well, making sure that I blew nothing off. It all looks good. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine, and that is fine. Let me check the fuse is still there, actually. This is the fuse right here. I did get a blob of uh, low melt solder on it, and I was a little bit worried when I was using that and see if it would fall off, but don't think that component would have fell off. This is good. So what I'm now going to do is take all of the solder off. I'm going to put some leaded solder just on these to clear them up. Then I'll wick it all away and reapply some fresh solder to here and here. Obviously, everything else is going to be blank.
personally think that this is an okay job. I don't think it's gonna work. And I have, as you can see, melted the plastic. I've just got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Me and switches just don't go well, I guess. I tried moving my air gun as much as I possibly could. For those who are interested, I had a, a temperature of 480 degrees Celsius and a fan speed of six, then I went to seven, and then I, I put it up to eight eventually just to get in and out as quick as I possibly could. The connections look okay at the front, but I am 93.6% sure that the connections underneath aren't soldered. They're quite nice and shiny. They don't look like they've got solder everywhere. I will give it a little bit of a nudge uh, with some tweezers just to see if they are secure. I don't think they are. That's okay, that's okay, that's okay. That's okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. That one you can tell is gonna be all right. That's okay, that's okay. Okay, so they all seem to be solid. That's a little bit of a relief, but like I said, the ones underneath, I don't think they're going to be. I'm just gonna fill up the rest of the holes with solder and then we'll put it back together and give it a test. Wish me luck. I've put it back together as much as it needs to be back together for us to test. So I'm gonna take the USB amp meter and I'm gonna plug it in. If this doesn't work, I will test other things because one thing I realized is that I didn't actually test M92, for example, or to see if there was any shorts anywhere else. Having that old faulty charging port could have caused a short somewhere around the board, hence why it wasn't turning on. So let's just test the charging port and see if what we've done is a good enough job. Here we go, very nervous, very nervous. The port itself looks to be in an okay position. Did those connections make a connection underneath? That's a big, fat, upsetting, disappointing no-no. Because we're not getting any draw here, look. Even if I wiggle it about, battery is connected. Let me try the other side, see if that works. So we get 0 0.4 amp draw here. I'll try it on the, this way again. And we get 0, 0.00. So it works the other way, it doesn't work this way. Let me take it out of the housing and do some more testing. Meter is in beep mode, also known as continuity mode. Let's just test this fuse first of all. Fuse is fine. I'm gonna go straight to M92. So this capacitor here, start with this one underneath. Wait a minute. So the three caps, this is where I had the fault last time. This seems to be fine. This cap's fine. This cap's fine. This one isn't. For those who saw my last video, I actually said that this might be a result of a dead CPU, but I think I stand corrected and I think, oh, wait a minute, that's not beeping anymore. Either side. It was. Beeping that side. Is beeping that side. So I don't know if this is like a, I don't know if this is a dead CPU. Imagine if I've just wasted my time. I think that's, I think though, that's P13. I think it's this chip on the back here, if that capacitor is not working correctly. So let's just test the caps and stuff around Pi. Check this cap here. So P13, this chip here, P13, seems to be faulty, as you can see. I'm just gonna check all the filters. This also needs a bigger clean because of the flux. I'm just gonna check these filters quick. I don't think this filter's working. <laughs> I don't think it is. Let me just double check. So I get something that side. I don't get something that side and I believe it's a continuous path between here and here, which means that this filter's gone. The, all the others are good. And even this side doesn't work. So I believe what I need to do and I think it's because of the, do the dodgy charging port that we had previous. I think I'm gonna have to replace P13 and I'm also gonna have to replace this filter here. Luckily I have a replacement P13 chip, that's no problem. For the filter, I'm gonna have to use an old donor switch that is completely ruined, but I can safely say that that switch is written off. Let me quickly take that one apart and test the filter, make sure, and I'll transfer it over first. I took apart two switches and found one that had exactly what we needed. So again, continuity mode, I'm just gonna make sure I test this before I pull it. Seems to be fine. That is definitely fine. Okay, so we know that we have a good filter. We're gonna take this one off and then we're gonna test to see if the shorts are still there or whether they've gone on the P13 chip. So let's do that quickly. P13 is still bad. All right, let's put the other one on.
Just want to make sure that we get continuity between this pin and this one. Yes, okay, we do, that's good. And they're not connected. Okay, fine, right. Pie off again. I've, I've taken, I've put it on, I've taken it off, I've put it on, I've taken it off numerous times, but I never actually tested if the short was gone when the pie chip was off the board. So let me check that now quick. So meter in continuity mode, do I get a beep? I do, so I still get a beep on this cap. Without the chip on. Okay, so what about these caps? What about these little caps? Do they all of these little caps beep as well, but I don't know if they're just low impedance. They're, coming, they're showing up as 10 ohms, I think I think that's what they're meant to be. If I turn the board around and go back to M92 where we have the short and where I diagnosed, which is this one down here, the short is still there, so you can hear that? Still get the short on that one. What about this one? Still get the short. I never got a short on this cap previous, but this one? I still get a short on this cap, and I still also get a short on this cap, even after removing P13 USB. I don't know if that means dead CPU, you know? If I measure the back, so this is around where the CPU area is. Let's, uh, let's put it to ground and just measure a few caps. That's coming up as short, and that's coming up as short. Okay, that's worrying. Short on that one as well. No! Where the CPU is, this is where the, like, the cluster of caps is. Um, and that's with P13 removed as well. That kind of sucks. Does that mean that this board is uh, is no good then? Does that mean CPU is dead, even though we uh, replaced the charging port? I'll tell you what, that's one thing. If this board is dead, it will teach me to test more before removing stuff. Kind of sucks. I'm just going to remove M92 and see if the short goes. No. My theory is that because we had a broken charging port on this switch to begin with. I think that because of how mangled up the port was, it shorted and then it's dispatched the CPU. That's my uh, that's my Joey Does Tech theory. I'm gonna rule this one off as a dead CPU, but if you have any advice that you can give me as to why this might not be working and if there is a way back for it, then that would be appreciated. I didn't know you'd still receive like an amp draw to the battery if the CPU had died. So maybe the CPU isn't dead and maybe I'm just being an idiot. If you guys could let me know in the comment section down below, I'd greatly appreciate it. Sorry I wasn't able to fix this Nintendo Switch in today's video. I hope you have a good rest of your weekend and I will see you in the next one. Peace.